Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to a tech edition of Strange Love. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. And this week's guest is Don Park, also known as Don P. Don P. Hello, everyone. Hey, Don P. Don P. Hey, how you doing? So what are we talking about tonight? Okay, so this is the episode where the host, that's me, is going to ask the guest, that's Don, a question. And Don is going to explain it like the host doesn't understand at all. (laughs) No, surely not. (laughs) Purely hypothetical situation. This is the tech edition, isn't it? (laughs) So aside from what I've grown up with in science fiction, tell me what Android is before you get into anything that it can do. Mm Mm-hmm. What is it? We're going to talk about androids? Mm. Not androids, android. Android. (laughs) Android is a software platform. It was written by Google. Google does many cool things on a very large scale. And they feel that, and I agree with, the future of computing is not desktops. It's not laptops. It is cell phones. Cell phones will outnumber desktop computers. Well, Well, have already outnumbered laptop computers combined. And uh, they are what computing will be. Uh, c- computing will be very personal. Uh, it will be always with you. As I bicycled here to the studios tonight, I passed two 10-year-olds sitting on a sidewalk curb in the dark. And they're looking at each other, talking to each other, but each one had a cell phone in their hand. Uh, they had that, that glow that you can tell from a, a long distance that it's a, it's a screen. It's an LCD screen. And That was their entertainment, was cell phones. Uh, And so Google knows this, that cell phones are the future of computing. And so they wrote a software platform, an operating system called uh, Android. And they wrote it uh, based on Java, the programming language Java, which exists and has existed for a long time, has a lot of engineering behind it and a lot of software has already been written. It's considered the new COBOL, Java is. And uh, so they took this Java language and they rewrote it with uh, cell phones in mind. And they made it completely open source. which means that anyone can copy it. It eliminates a zillion problems and questions about who owns what and who gets paid for what that you're seeing on the iPhone platform uh, by making it open source. And rather than having one phone, originally people uh, said there's going to be a Google phone, but there isn't a Google phone. There's a Google. That's what I was going to ask about. Yeah, it's a Google software platform, and that runs on many phones. The first of which will be released in a month. Because so. cause a year ago, when the iPhone came out. <laughs> And you blogged about this, Cami, on your blog. I, I did. said, "No, I didn't." No, I, wait. I blogged about it on a blog that I was writing at, not oh, on that's my personal right. blog. Oh, okay, it was I on blogged, Metro Blogs. I blogged that I found the whole. What, how much was it to begin with? Six hundred dollar yeah. iPhone craze, ridiculous. Mm. I thought it was stupid that people were standing in line. But I was the one who said, "Oh no, not the iPhone. Correct. I'm waiting for the Correct. Android." Phone. That was later, though. So the Android phone. I was upset. I thought it was obscene that people were standing in line waiting to buy something for six hundred dollars that they'd mm-hmm. never even seen or touched. Have, Actually, you, have you seen David Pogue's video about the iPhone is musical? It's great. He's I a, the oh, tech no. writer for the New York yeah, Times. Yeah, right, right, right. But yeah, yeah. It's a great video about the iPhone and waiting in line for it. You should see it. Oh no, I have, I have. I think yeah. I have. It okay. took me. It took me a minute. He yeah, he, does, he does the one that does like a song a week or a song a day. No, 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 no. no. It's oh. David Pogue. He's he's the uh, uh, Apple kind of iphone writer he does he he does stuff on i want to say cross posts right internet but he does stuff uh he does a, a weekly on cnbc as does well. he? Yeah, I'm yeah okay yeah yeah uh, anyway the video is really funny and a great yeah. explanation of and a big apple line. kind of supporter he's written some books or uh you know. well yeah writing for the times i hope he's you know uh, Writing, yeah. <laughs> okay, so but that was the whole point, though. Let's go back is that there would Android, be this though. Google phone, right? Correct. So, well, no. I mean, it was supposed to be one phone. It's supposed right, to be the exactly. platform and any But instead of doing one phone, it's they not. made it available for. So, what kind of a phone can you ha- run Android on? Okay, so the first manufacturer is going to be HTC. Uh, and so it's not. They haven't really released anything yet. That's right. Yeah, okay. the, the first real Android phone will be coming uh, in October or so, possibly November. From so, T-Mobile. should we jump in here and explain? HTC essentially is they're Taiwanese, right? I if I recall. believe so. I forget. And yeah, they've so. made like all of the major. Brian, who's in the studio audience, is, is nodding his head. Nodding yeah, his head. Looking to him for technical uh, information. And <laughs> HTC is one of the major manufacturers in China. 
with they're huge yeah they, and they do they've done like palms and all uh, of the big they, designs actually mostly windows mobile phones oh, okay the phones okay. they've done so far have been sexy as hell they've yeah been really exactly. cool phones they are a leading manufacturer even though you don't think of htc you don't go into your best buy and go give me right. an htc if you see a samsung phone or a kyocera phone they all kind of look the same and, and they're just sort of rather ugly right. whereas htc phones are really quite beautiful right um, right they've yeah. done some really leading designs yes. over the years so the htc dream is the first android phone that's coming uh, from t-mobile and that's what it's called it's the dream yes and it will be on t-mobile right they're the first ones to sell such a phone when's it coming out well it'll either be october or november October Which is one? very soon. Yeah. <laughs> Give us a date, Don. <laughs> I don't know. That's all T-Mobile said. It said by November, but possibly as early as October. Can you call Eric so Schmidt right now, exciting. the CEO of Google, and get that date for us on the show? <laughs> he probably doesn't know. I have to call the whoever you know the it's uh, T-Mobile headquarters right? of T-Mobile in Germany. Yeah, so there we go. To find out. Okay, so now that we know what Android does, or what it is, yes. what can it do for us? Well. Uh, did you have a, a PDA back in the 90s, a personal digital yes, assistant? You did. You like had a Palm, Palm Pilot? I had a Palm Pilot. You did? Yeah. We were a Palm Pilot family. Oh, right on. It's the, the my, my entire uh, pregnancy was scheduled on my Palm Pilot. Really? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it was. Well, no, uh, no, not, not getting pregnant. The actual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she wouldn't leave Get that Palm Pilot up. out of her, um, her, her <laughs> Palm. Uh, you know, it was just really distracting, but. So in the, but hey, that's an after-hours conversation, no. isn't it? In the 90s, the Palm Pilot, or well, PDAs were a big deal. Mm-hmm. Palm Pilots were everywhere. Uh, and cell phones were popular but dumb. And there was a question, would cell phones become more PDA-like or would PDAs become more cell phone-like? Correct. And the uh, late 90s, PDAs died. Palm has not put out a new model of PDA in I don't know how long. No. Uh, they have and a phone, though. They've been focused on the yeah, trio. They've got the, yeah, yeah, the, the Trail and, now and the, the Centro. Centro. Right. Yeah. Um, but basically, cell phones won that battle. And cell phones, well, the iPhone is the reintroduction of the PDA, in my opinion. That's why it's so popular. Because people forgot about PDAs. People forgot what PDAs can do. And the iPhone reminded them, but it's also a really good phone. I agree. Uh, I agree. I agree as well. So as far as what Android can do, it can do everything your palm did. You know, it's kind of a reimagining but not be of clunky. the PDA. But not yeah, sexier full keyboard. So, um, so okay, keyboard. Let let's let's go back to why everyone wants and covets an iPhone. And by I mean everyone, I mean most people, right? I mean, not yeah. everyone does, but yeah. Um, but yeah, let's. I don't, I don't think Don covets an iPhone, and I don't we'll think next week that. guest. <laughs> we'll uh, talk about that. I don't think that. he covets an iPhone either. <laughs> but but the, the the issue here is that one of the things that the iPhone and the i iPod Touch have is that interface, that liquid interface, the, you know, moving your fingers. And yeah, it's, doing a, it's that. a sexy interface. I mean, Apple has the sexiest hardware of anyone, you know, just no questions right. about it. And I would I would actually love to own an iPhone, but it's the other requirements around the iPhone that keep me free. Right, it. right. Uh, but we'll, we'll, so my question is, how will Google play? Because if we, if we agree that, um, you know, if there's one thing that Apple does well, it's the the user interface, right? They are right. about the user experience. This is why they're successful. The question is, can Google be successful in that end user interface? Yeah, that is a good question. Um, the emulator for Android is available now, so you can play with it on your laptop. So it'll be no surprise what it looks like when the phone comes out. Just um, smaller. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe fat well hopefully faster mm-hmm. um but uh it looks good i mean i played with it quite a bit uh it's you know in some ways very similar to the iphone there's a there's a menu with you know little icons that you choose from and each icon represents a different application uh and it's cool it's just different i guess you'd have to see it uh, and is it touch touch screen interface oh sure yeah, you know, and in fact, they had to be a little bit more uh, broader in their thinking when they wrote the uh, Android software because they knew it would run on a big variety of phones. They knew that it would run on phones with a big screen. They knew that it would run on phones with a little tiny screen. So some of the phones will be a touch screen. Some of them will be your standard yes. key yes. pad. That's right. So where does it depart from the BlackBerry? Because the BlackBerry also was a PDA and a phone. But in, mm. my, in my experience, it was a lot more PDA than phone. And actually arguably the most successful right now, correct? At least in the corporate enterprise world. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd have to ask Jason Grigsby. He knows numbers <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, BlackBerry is, is very much top of the... 
top of the heap at this point. Okay. Uh, yeah. You and how? Take your word for that. <laughs> Um, You're right. The BlackBerry is very much more PDA-like than any other phone, mm-hmm. uh, but its development environment is very. It's hard to get into. And it's closed because it's not uh, open source. Yeah, I mean, you can download tools. I think it costs money to be a developer or at least to publish applications. You have to get your application encrypted by uh, RIM, the company behind BlackBerry, in order for it to run on BlackBerry phones. Uh, so yeah, it's just it's not as friendly. It's possible. I just. I haven't looked into it because my forte is open source. So let me ask you, and it's an open source question just as much as it is an Android question. Um, you've got the Android platform or the operating system on your phone, and so then you can alter it, you can change it, you can rewrite it to be what you want to a certain extent. Yes. What? Where's the responsibility if you do something and it crashes a system and you share that? I mean, how do you ensure that... that Something you're not taking something in that's going to to I think the term is brick it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Uh, and basically, there there are no guarantees. Um, you know, and, and for all the for all the protection that Apple tries to provide to the iPhone and all the restrictions, the iPhone still <laughs> crashes. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't it know does. if there's much benefit in trying to uh, add that kind of protection through uh, external you know requirements like being accepted into an application store. Sigh. <laughs> so, um, going back to one of the things you were talking about, this is what concerns... So, I'm excited about Android. I, I want to see it. Um, I have... We Dr. Have, Normal, you may not have one. No Androids for you. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> um, well, I may not have one, depending on how much they cost. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, I, I, we came from the Palm... PDA. I I loved my Palm from you know ten years ago. I was like once I had it syncing with my calendar and everything. I was the guy with the day planner, you know. Mm-hmm. And then once the Palm actually addressed that, it was like there it was, my Palm. And then it merged into the phone. There was an early Qualcomm Palm phone which was really clunky. Yeah, if you recall. And then when the trios came out, they were they were very cool. And, and I think the iPhone right now is just the pinnacle of the user experience and the interface. You know, I use Twitter. I use the brow. The browser is wonderful. It is. But it's so fast and responsive. It, it, it's wonderful. Um, but what concerns me, and this is what concerns me, why I've never used Windows Mobile, mm-hmm. is that what you, what you just said about Android, about kind of being, um, it, it's like every different screen, right? It's like the one thing about the iPhone is they're writing a user experience for a single format, a single screen. Mm-hmm. And now you have Android, and Windows Mobile had the same issues, I think, where you have multiple screen formats, and you got to figure out, well, we've got a keyboard. No, we don't have a keyboard. We have a touch interface mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. I feel that that actually hurts the platform rather than helps it. I think one of the the things that Apple is doing right is they're writing to a single platform, this Mm -hmm. touch screen without a keyboard. And and it's kind of the Apple model, right? Yeah, it's simpler, and no doubt doubt about it. Right. Uh, People writing for Apple hardware have got it simpler as well because the MacBook Pros are very standard. You know what kind of hardware you're writing for. So, yeah, no, no question, it is simpler. And that's what concerns me about, I mean, I don't think that... Um, I don't think that any solution is going to be perfect on every format or every screen, mm-hmm. right? Or every keyboard layout. Yeah, developers will have to remember that there are like a variety of screens, some right. with keyboards, some without. Right. So, I don't know. I mean, how how do you see that as far as su- su- criteria well, for a success? I, yeah, for I think Google that a Android. certain form factor is going to be very popular. So I think that an iPhone-like form factor uh, will be very popular gotcha. amongst Android phones, and people without that, people who are buying phones that are deviating from that platform, will probably be in the test case that you know nobody develops for, and that will probably suck. Um, but the applications right. will run. Will there be a different? I mean, will there be a different operating system, or a different version of the operating system for those phones? No, no. I mean, no. It's the one version is meant to run on, on all kinds of hardware. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, their experience will probably be not as good. Uh, but they can at least run the same software. I mean, at least, you know, it, it will work. It may not just look as good. Okay. It just won't be as cool. Yeah. 
Is it actually a Linux-based kernel, or is it? Yeah, yeah, it is Linux uh, from the ground up. There's Linux and uh, libc, and then there's the custom Java virtual machine that Google wrote, and a bunch of Java libraries. So all the all the applications that will run will be will be then the Java-based applications. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. And how do you, have you ever have you ever uh, one one platform that I've never uh, really worked with? I know somebody who's actually very into open source and actually was into this platform as well years ago is the Symbian platform. Mm-hmm. Have you worked with that? How does that compare to Android? I, I haven't worked with Symbian, um, but I know that they've open sourced uh, just this year. They announced it at OSCON, I believe. Uh, but the thing with Symbian was that you know they said, we're open sourcing, we know this is the way of the future, and the only way to compete is to open source the platform, but the first open source-based cell phones will be in 2010. So oh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to take, it's kind of a non-issue because it's going to take them so long to get there. We wow. want our toys now. Yeah, exactly. I'm well, not very patient. <laughs> we want our toys for Christmas 2008. Yeah. So yeah, Symbian is a very important platform, uh, but that's going to take them a long time to move to open. So source. if you, being the mobile expert that you are, mm-hmm. so when you look out in the landscape to 2010, say 2012, mm-hmm. Who's winning and who's losing? So is is Symbian in the game? Is it Android? Is it uh, Mac? Is it? Yeah, I don't think there'll be one winner. I mean, I see it actually as uh, kind of an OS ten and Android mix. Uh, they'll both be neck and neck for a while for different reasons. Just the way Windows is surviving. Um, How about Windows Mobile? Yeah, I don't see a big future for Windows Mobile. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why is that? I, I don't think, even know anyone that uses Windows Mobile. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it is pop. I mean, the, do you know anyone who uses the, Windows Mobile? Yeah, in the past. Yeah, yeah. The desktop like now, though, paradigm doesn't transfer to a cell phone very I well. I agree. So that's the main reason why the, it, I don't it, see it, it lasting. What? What? And this is the concern I have with Android: is when you look at the interface, and like you said, you're dealing with different resolution screens, mm-hmm. smaller screens, bigger mm-hmm. screens, um, keyboards, and it's like you need to take that into account. And I think that's one thing that the Palm OS originally did so well is they dealt with screen real estate so well. When you have a giant start button or you know Windows button or whatever it is in your interface, it's like Right. Well, okay, you've just taken up that real estate on my little tiny screen that well, I need there, to deal with. There are other uh, aspects that Android enforces on application developers. They they tell developers your application may have the rug pulled out from it under at any moment. So that if if memory is running low, um, Android can kill your process. Oh, really? And, yeah. Oh. And so uh, developers are told upfront you have to sort of be aware this is a different environment. This is not like a desktop. Where you have unlimited RAM and limited CPU, you, you, there are there are limits, and you've got to be able to save your state on a moment's notice, uh, and you've got to be able to sort of freeze and restore, you know, very seamlessly. You have to save your state. Yeah, I mean, you'll the, get the you'll, program has to be able right. to. Yes, yeah. the program will say you've got you know fifty milliseconds to save your data because you're going to die. So, so the <laughs> operating system sends a yeah. an interrupt in the signal and says yeah. you better save your state because we're checking that's, out. That's right. Really? Yeah. So yeah. I mean, and, you know, I think the iPhone is similar. Yeah, so, I was just yeah, I was going to ask because I'll be doing something on my iPhone and it'll decide it doesn't like it and it'll just shut the program down and go back to the main screen. Yeah, yes. and you're always jumping in and out of iPhone apps because mm-hmm. right? iPhone doesn't multitask, no. which is unbelievable. But it doesn't. That is my right. that is my one big criticism is that it does one thing at a time. Well, neither yeah, did right. neither I mean, neither did the Palm. That's right. Yeah. As well. uh, no, I mean, but it doesn't necessarily the, mean that you have to multitask. But I always wanted mobile. Palm too. I mean, the, <laughs> the Palm, you like, know that I don't think they really upgraded that aspect of it ever. And so when the iPhone came out, I was kind of hoping for a little bit more. Also, I'd love it if I could have an SD slot on my yeah. iPhone. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's well, another yeah. way Apple locks you in. Whereas yeah. the Android phones will have micro SD card slots yeah. so that you can expand them. Yeah, nice. yeah, that'll that'll be a big plus, absolutely. Yeah, because I mean, it was uh, Windows three point one could multitask, right? I right. Mean, it was DOS right. that could yeah. multi. You know, we're going back to DOS, like you know, that's. Yeah. So, uh, do you act? So, you are running uh, when you're developing. You're running an emulator on your desktop. You are not right. actually running hardware. Right. It's are the you, Eclipse platform. The Eclipse. It's called Eclipse. Uh, it's a popular Java platform. And, oh, okay. Uh, and. Google releases an SDK that integrates with that, and there's a really nice looking emulator. It looks just like the phone that I believe that it was modeled after the HTC Dream, so it actually looks like the first phone that will come out. So, mm. dreamy. 
Actually, Palm did the same thing years ago mm. when Palm came out. They did mm. the same thing. They had a desktop emulator, and people would write for the emulator before the actual hardware came out. Yeah, that's right. So, many years ago. <laughs> that was for the Dragon Ball processor. <laughs> that's right, so. yeah. Do you have any insights into the hardware? What what kind of processor, what the HTC is uh, going to be running? No, I don't. I just wanted to have a GPS receiver so that I can do the uh, continual location application. Well, so since it's Google, wouldn't that be a given? Not necessarily. I mean, it's so? up to the manufacturer, whatever they feel like, you know, they can afford to put into the phone, whatever they think they're going to sell, they'll put in. So why do you want to have the continual locator? Ability. Do you want people to know where you are at all times? Pretty much, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> I mean, th- I was thinking about that this weekend. There's just so many little situations where, well, Case Organic put it really well with Twitter. She said that um, what are you doing is kind of an unanswerable question, mm-hmm. or at least a question that you can just always ask. Where are you is another one of those big questions. Where um, I am is almost always not. <laughs> One place. I don't see. I, I I don't move around a lot. I have my daily routine. I go from point A to point mm-hmm. B to point mm-hmm. C, back to point A, repeat. Well, for instance, uh, when you were waiting for me to arrive today, mm-hmm. I mean, wouldn't it be nice to just pull out your iPhone and say, "Boop!" You know, there's Don, and he's I can in, see he's oh, doing ten miles an hour he's down in my backyard. Lane. That's right, <laughs> knocking on your window. <laughs> Um, yeah, that or, is. Or the studio audience. You can say, oh, Verso's at home when she should be on the road, so maybe she's not coming. She's sleeping on her couch. Well, this yeah. this is this is uh, more useful, not for people like us who are homebound and workbound, but for people who are digital nomads, yes. like yourself. Yes. And we'll talk more about that in after hours, actually. Okay. <laughs> so before we run out of time, though, I want to talk about some other mobile technology. You've got something cool on your bike. Oh, I do. Uh, it is called an Ant- Arduino. It's an 8-bit microprocessor. Arduino. And what does it do? Uh, well, it's basically a CPU from the 80s. And what what, uh, what kind of 8-bit is it? Um, What's it based on? Uh, oh, man. Z80? Or? No. <laughs> I knew this. I can't remember. It's a okay. simple. It's a cheap, popular 8-bit microprocessor. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Strange Love Live. Dr. Normal stump the <laughs> host. Right. Or no. stump the guest. The chat room probably knows. Yeah, exactly. The host could have been stumped on any Okay, it's an 8-bit <laughs> micro- <laughs> microprocessor. Yeah, it's very, uh, very 16K of RAM. There you go. And what is it, it doing on your bike? Uh, well, it, it takes a little program that I wrote in C. Mm-hmm. And the program says, well... There's uh, like 12 input and output pins, mm-hmm. and you can connect things to it like LEDs. Mm-hmm. So for three of the pins, I have L- like a little group of LEDs on the handlebars, mm-hmm. and then some yellow LEDs and some red LEDs on the bucket on mm-hmm. the back of my bike. And those are wired up to the Arduino. And then the little C program says, these pins are output, and uh, turn these on, wait half a second, turn these off, wait half a second, and repeat. It's a turn signal or just a... Uh, it's just an indicator. To let know. Yeah, mm-hmm. just an indicator. Yeah, I thought about a turn signal. I don't know if drivers are ready for turn signals on bikes. I'm ready as a pedestrian <laughs> for turn signals on bikes, and yeah. as a bike rider, I can never remember the hand signals. Yeah, you know, I, it <laughs> makes more sense. You know, you're supposed to just stick your your hand out, like your right hand or your left hand. Mm-hmm. Some people do the car thing where you raise your left hand in a in a hook shape. Right. But that right. was designed because you couldn't stick your right hand out of exactly. a car. Exactly. So it's sort of silly to do it on a bike. But it's the same thing on the bike. I, yeah. I never figured that. When I was yeah. a kid and I looked at the signals, I was like, what? That, this makes no <laughs> sense, right? It's like, oh, the driver's to the left. That's and right. what do you do in England, right? What do you do in London? <laughs> You're sitting on the other side. <laughs> That's right. Are you doing the same signals or are you doing something else? <laughs> like a little hang loose from Hawaii or <laughs> something right. for a right turn. The guy's are like, what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> don't do British accents into the microphone, honey. Oh, uh, Okay. <laughs> So this thing sits on my bike. Uh, it's got some AA batteries powering it, and it looks really cool. Mm-hmm. So it so, just looks cool and makes lights? Just looks, Yeah, it looks cool and makes lights, although I have future plans. Well, the reason I installed it is because I had the standard white lights you buy, and it kept getting mm-hmm. stolen. Oh. Like once a month, the lights would be stolen off my bike. So now that it's custom, mm-hmm. there's nothing worth stealing. There's like four LEDs and some loose wires. Because they wouldn't uh, know what to do with it. Yeah, you wouldn't, you would, yeah it has no value by itself. So it's interesting in that, you know, it's it's, a, it's kind of expressive because I can build it in any style or shape I want. Very cool. And uh, nobody wants to steal it. But uh, there's Now everybody who listens to the show is going to yeah. <laughs> find Don's bike and take it. Oh, look at that. 
<laughs> there's an expansion plan though the bucket in the back okay mm-hmm. i want a, a motor that just moves up and down like six inches mm-hmm. and then i want to put a head on that right and so the cover of the bucket <laughs> is just uh, like cardboard it's very easy to push up mm-hmm. so if just at random times the little arduinos powered the motor up and the head went mm-hmm. you know like it looked around like that would okay. people out that'd be, that great. be really awesome yeah. we're definitely getting into after hours uh <laughs> burning man after okay. burn issues here yeah because you know you, there's better issues. processors you can use um so so october november it's right. going to be from, android from t-mobile they're going to try to rope you into a two-year contract which i'm not going to do so that's why i'm curious about the price because if you know if it's like 700 dollars with no contract <laughs> wait a minute i'm not going to get one here's so. a question you can jailbreak an iphone Will you be able to jailbreak an Android phone? Well, you see, there's no need to jailbreak an Android okay. phone. So, so, no. I mean, you can do whatever you want with an Android phone. That's why people like it. Well, but the well, reason people jailbreak an iPhone is to... Different provider. To, to, to get a different provider. So, say I'm like, oh, I really want my Android phone on AT&T. Okay. So, yeah, that's called a locked GSM cell phone, right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. okay, here's here's one thing that... Of many things that Google does, that's that's great. There's the Open Handset Alliance that Google created to mm-hmm. say if you want to, you know, be part of this Android movement and you're, you're a big cell phone company, be part of the Open Handset Alliance. To be part of the Handset Alliance, you cannot modify Android to lock the phone to your your own carrier. Oh, so, so they, they can just, just change. They just it. eliminated that straight off. Yeah. It's just that T-Mobile is the one selling it. That's right. Okay, that makes sense. So no, you can't jailbreak it to change. So, well, yeah, I mean, there's no need to, right? There. It's okay. already broken. <laughs> Is it going to be expensive? Do you think? Yeah, I don't know. I think it will be. I mean, I think T-Mobile wants to make as much money as Apple is. They're drooling over the revenues that AT and T and Apple are getting. Yeah, but they dropped the price. So well, that's yeah, that's my question. Will they will they release it to parallel the original cost of the iPhone or the current cost? Yeah, it's hard to say. Because let's see, know. the when the iPhone first came out, it was six hundred, and then it went down to three, I think, or maybe it went down to four, and then it went down to three, and then the three G came out, and the three G was two. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. two hundred bucks. Huh? Yeah, for the eight. Yeah, gig. but the contract With is more. A, yeah, the monthly plan is more. To your contract and some DNA samples and yeah, you know, you firstborn. Yeah, I'm on over. prepaid cell phone. I like that. No oh, burners. What? You do burners. Bur- uh, what are burners? You prepay them and you use the minutes and then you, you throw just... the cell phone away. Oh, God, no. <laughs> burners. <laughs> yeah. E-waste is a whole other issue. No, I mean, I use the same cell phone. I just recharge the SIM card. Right, right, right. I mean, it's essentially a burner. You can still blow the phone if you if you want to. But Yeah. yeah. If you wanted to be a secret agent and you need to get rid of your cell phone. That's how the terrorist rolls, Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Apple. I was being nice. I said secret agent. That's much more acceptable than a terrorist. Apple cranks out 20,000 iPhones a month, you know, and where do those go in a couple of years, right? The trash and the and We the have landfill? all of our old cell phones. To leak, uh, yeah, we're, we're to leak to lead and whatever else we, in the groundwater. Exactly. We either give them away to, um, to charities that are looking for cell phones mm-hmm. or we just let them sit in our storage room until we can find a That's responsible right. way to get rid of them. I got a trio them. I need to hack and another tungsten. Yeah. So I can't stand the whole like throwing electronics like into the dump. Yeah. No, I know. I was, uh, yeah, where I worked uh, last year in LA, there was a cordless phone right in the office and the uh, the manager just didn't like the model anymore. He just picked the whole phone up with power supply, went over to the trash can and just dropped it in the oh trash. Oh my God. And I'm like, no, don't do that. And so I found a e-recycler and took it yeah. to him. And he's hey, like, Don, it's America. Come on. He's like, Come okay, on, if you want to go through the hassle, it's like, yes, I want to go through the hassle. I'll take it to their e-recycler. Well, we, we appreciate your uh, your greenness in the, uh, in the tech world. We appreciate you not murdering the earth. Mm. And... Uh, We'll be uh, coming back for After Hours, and we'll probably talk more about e-waste right. and uh, things you can put on your bike <laughs> with 8-bit processors that flash. <laughs> be sure but thanks to for talking about on. Android. We, uh, we're we going to have to get an update in uh, when this thing comes out. Thanks in for having October me on the show. That's yeah, right. it'll be exciting in a month. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for After Hours, and please join us next week when we have Aaron Hockley on the show to talk about WordCamp Portland.